If you want to know what the best five army lineup and the best seven army lineup is in rise of kingdoms this is the video for you because i've spent the last couple of days mathematically calculating the best armies from a trades perspective and also the best armies from a dps or damage per second perspective and honestly we're going to take a look at a lot of spreadsheet data today which made me almost not want to make this video but i really sat back and thought like this video might be useful to people who are interested in peeling back the curtain a little little bit because we're going to take a deep dive into theory crafting. But first, what's going on guys? Cheers. Now real quick, about 68% of you guys are not subscribed. So click that button. We're so close to 70,000 subscribers, which is honestly insane. So thank you. If you have subscribed already, I wouldn't be here without you. And while you're down there, drop a thumbs up on the video. That way YouTube pushes this video out into the algorithm. Okay. Now the first thing we have to go over is what is theory crafting? Because that's a term that I've thrown around occasionally, but I don't really cover what it is in depth, even though a a lot of my videos for rise of kingdoms are theory crafting and then taking that information and applying it to my kbk seeing how things work and then doing that over and over again as they add new commanders to the game and that's why you see on my channel i'm constantly updating the guides for different troop types the best open field pairings and all sorts of things like that but the foundation of all of that and where it all begins is theory crafting theory crafting is the mathematical analysis of game mechanics usually in video games to discover optimal strategies and tactics theory crafting involves analyzing statistics hidden systems or underlying game code in order to glean information that is not apparent during normal gameplay so i've been theory crafting damage per second data and sev wound trade data for the past couple of days using the one and only rock battle simulator which i'm going to link in the description below again not affiliated with the project at all i just really appreciate it and at this point we've been using the simulator for a really long time and probably 95 percent of you understand the function of the simulator but this is a theory crafters dream it essentially takes the game mechanics and extracts out the formulas and puts it in a a vacuum test chamber where you can run things at faster speeds and you can test perfectly ideal conditions for a lot of different things now this is never going to replace actual in-game testing but the speed with which you can get an insane amount of important data from the simulator is unmatched and again this is a great foundation to build off of now in the video where we talked about belisarius prime and i did some combat target dummy testing i came across some really interesting data with regards to nevsky joan versus huo joan and nevsky william versus huo william and so what i wanted to do is actually run those same tests for basically 45 or 43 different open field pairings in rise of kingdoms so that way we can really get a breakdown as to like okay what would theoretically the best open field marches be from a dps and trades perspective so if you missed that video we're going to quickly go through what exactly this specific new mode is in the rock battle simulator but essentially what's happening here on the screen is you can see the parameters with which i'm testing and i'll move my head here so you can see that i'm using the full skill tree which was the case for any commander that had the skill tree by the way but what we're doing is testing the army on the left against a test dummy so in this instance it is generic archers with some generic skill and they also have four reinforcement armies that are swarming down our Guan CPO. I've assumed Guan CPO here has 8% of stats for attack, defense, and health from his armaments and a seven attack, seven defense rune plus the 5% skill damage city skin here, a 10% defense token. Everything here is iconic. And I used a full legendary set without any special talents or anything like that, because I think that's a nice middle ground. Lots of players can get their hands on a full legendary set not everybody can get a full talented everything so I felt this would be the most fair I also assumed that we're in season of conquest with the museum relics and everything like that and what this does is it basically runs a theoretical test dummy battle for six minutes and what you'll see here is the damage per second from the army and at the very end of all of this you're going to get a battle report and what I've done is I've collected all the battle reports for all of the most popular open field pairs and put them in a spreadsheet so we can compare them against one another now it's important to note for all the these tests what I've done is paired it up against the troop type that counters them so this is the worst case scenario for all of these different pairs and the reason that I did that is because if the simulator is slightly off or it's less accurate which I'm sure is the case I'm sure it's you know maybe 90 95 percent accurate it's not perfect then at least we're not getting overly hyped about the results right I want it to be the most tame baseline worst case scenario possible so now that you know what I was testing for we can take a look at all of the data and the results that I got now what you'll see here is a few things that I kept track of the damage per second of the army the total damage that they dealt 
the sev wounds that the army took the sev wounds that the army dealt the ratio of the sev wounds that you took versus dealt and the damage per sev wound just out of curiosity i wanted to see what that ratio was because in theory the sev wound ratio and the damage per sev wound taken would give you a good idea as to how good that army is going to trade now again this is in a vacuum perfect scenario simulation testing this is foundational theory crafting okay i'm not trying to sell you this as gospel but this is a really good place to start to test all these different armies so here you can see in red we have all the different archer pairs that i tested here so herman ashurbanipal ashurbanipal herman Liang with herman Liang with ashurbanipal and so on and so forth in green we have obviously cavalry nevsky joan huo joan joan belisarius zhang yu william all sorts of things and then in blue we have the different infantry pairings and i think you get the drill so let's quickly take a look at what we get from the archers here let's just take a quick look at that data so if we sort this by the sev wound ratio you'll also notice that it happens to be in the same order as the damage per sev wound taken ratio which makes a lot of sense intuitively this really th these are pretty much in sync all the time except for the cases where you have like honda or mehmed where you're bringing more troops to the battle and even then it's very very close but what you'll see here here is that the single best trading army in theory would be Herman Prime primary with Ashurbanipal secondary and this is because it this army is still dealing an insane amount of damage it's not the highest damage per second army but because you have the support tree on Herman Prime you actually take less sev wounds than almost any other here except for Boudicca Ashurbanipal so that's why this ratio is super important is this the best DPS army no but it'll probably be the best trading army all other things created equal if you want a little bit more damage you can see that you can swap Ashurbanipal for primary and that will give you more damage but it will also give you more sev wounds taken and again this makes sense logically in the game because you're shifting from the support talent tree to the skill talent tree so you're going to get more damage and less tankiness so this all makes a lot of sense intuitively if you understand how the game is working and this is going to help you determine how you run these different armies right because if you want maximum dps for example you're a whale you don't really care about your trades but you do need to make sure that you burn that king's land flag well then you're going to want to sort this by damage per second but if you're open field fighting maybe you're a free-to-play player a low spender or whatever and you really care about your hospital bills then you might want to consider going by the damage per sev wound or sev wound ratio now again the numbers don't paint the full picture because a lot of times if people see a herman prime primary you're going to be their number one target right so there is some player psychology that comes into this and also there is things like march speed for example right so that's why you see here that i didn't actually test something like juge leong with ysg because the damage per second there is going to be insane the trade is probably going to be insane as well but there's literally no march speed on that army and so it's probably not something that people are actually going to run although I did have a recent talk with Archer Syndicate he said he does sometimes use it for city popping on defense there are some uses for it but in general it's extremely slow in the late game and so it's very hard to make a good offensive use out of that army so again sort of like Boudicca YSG here I know Boudicca has 10 percent of March speed but out of everything that you see like this is probably the slowest army out of everything here right I guess it depends on the territory with Ashurbanipal but you get the point with that out of the way let's take a look at the cavalry statistics here so once again sorting this by the damage per sev wound taken or the sev wound ratio it basically comes out to be the same you'll see that Nevsky Joan is the number one best trading army in general here followed by Huo Joan. Third place is Joan primary with Belisarius secondary, which I did get people asking me about the potential for this army when I made my Belisarius video, but I didn't actually test it back then. I didn't think to do that because I never run Joan primary, but technically from a damage per second perspective and from a trade perspective, this army should trade really really well the downside is that it's a joan primary so you may get targeted more often similar to a herman primary it she has the double aoe she is seen as a glass cannon whether she will be with belisarius or not there will be the player psychology that kicks in and says oh that's a joan primary maybe that player doesn't know what they're doing typically it's behind nevsky or behind huo so you know you might get targeted a little more often but what we can see here is that even still even if that wasn't the case for example we still see that it seems to be a better idea to put Joan behind Nevsky or Huo than to run her with Belisarius now I'm gonna have a quick side note here because of course at the time of recording this Belisarius is not in the game yet okay which means that this is all again theory crafting with pre-release data so this is 
you know this is all speculation and again we're not testing for things like for example belisarius gets more bonuses if the target is being swarmed right and so that's where belisarius is going to shine a little bit better and perhaps the joan belisarius could actually outperform the nevsky joan or huo joan in the scenario where the target is being swarmed and in the open field you're typically swarming a target right so you know you have to keep those things in mind here like this actually could be a contender for belisarius now even from a trade perspective you'll see that zhang yu makes some top performances here which is pretty impressive we shouldn't be that impressed i guess because like in the case with zhang yu william double aoe zhang yu honda double aoe with more troops right so these are things that i think make a lot of sense but you'll also notice that the seven wounds that you take for the Zhang Yu William are significantly higher than things like Nevsky Joan, Huo Joan, or Joan Belisarius even. Like these are some of the highest sub wounds that you're going to take out of the entire list, right? So the reason that Zhang Yu William and Zhang Yu Honda are so high on this list is because of how much damage they're outputting because it's double AOE and that more than makes up for the subs that you're taking. But just remind yourself that if you are going to use Zhang Yu, you're probably going to take a lot of sev wounds and so you really have to be playing perfectly because if you're not playing well or you get a lag spike like you are prone to take a massive hospital bill and that's kind of the downside of Zhang Yu these days and why he feels a little bit older so with that out of the way let's take a look at the infantry data here and once again we are sorted by the best potential trade possibility for these armies and you can see Scipio Liu Che kind of no surprise here this is in number one place Guan Scipio though shocking second place ranking amongst the infantry pairings and this is kind of what I've been saying for a while now people keep saying Guan Scipio is washed up and I mean the data doesn't support it I use that pairing all KVK it performed super super well it performed on par with most of my other armies Liu Che Alex was kind of an outlier there and if you want to know how all my different armies performed you can check out my KVK recap video where I go over a bunch of different screenshots from actual in-game fighting so if that's what you're looking for that's the video for you I show dozens of different screenshots there but needless to say Guan CPU performed well for me and it's showing a good performance here in the theory crafting simulator as well CPO Honda coming in a nice third place here. Again, this is one of those things where it's double AOE. It's going to perform well. You're going to bring more troops to the battlefield. The sev wounds that you're going to take are a little bit higher than some other things here in the infantry category. And that is also something to be said about Guan CPO. A little bit higher sev wounds than you see from things like CPO Liu Che or even this is the Ottoman Empire CPO Liu Che. This top one is with France, by the way, in case you guys were wondering. Pyrus Liu Che, shockingly tanky, by the way, if you were wondering. Liu Che, Alex, right? So, like, these two are big DPS machines, but you will have a pretty big hospital if you're not playing correctly. So, please keep that in mind. Now, the other thing that I want to point out here is I did run some Sargon testing, okay? I know some people do still run the Sargon, and I mean, the results we get from Sargon are kind of what I expected. His best performance here is with CPO, and it's in one, two, three, four, five five, six, seven, eight, ninth place, right? Like not great here for Sargon. Definitely a big regret investing in Sargon for me. But now that we have all the data revealed, let's actually sort this by the damage per seven taken. And you're going to see that the best ratios right now at the current meta are from archers and from infantry why archers have massive aoe damage and they benefit tremendously here infantry are typically very very tanky and so they make up for it on the other end and that puts calves in a weird spot now we're gonna go over this in a little bit because if you're a calf man this is probably looking really depressing to you but i promise it's not that bad okay because the other thing that we have to keep in mind here is that for all of these tests or i should say a majority except for some of the liu che tests we are using the Ottoman Empire civilization, which means that archers have a special unit in all of these tests. And that is a bias towards archers that we can't remove because there is objectively no better way to test this because if you're a cav main, you're running Ottoman Empire. If you're an infantry main, you're probably running Ottoman Empire unless you're running France. And so archers just have a built in open field advantage here because they have the special unit. They get the 5% health from the city bonus. And on top of that, they benefit tremendously from the skill damage bonus because they're all AOE commanders, right? So archers have a very big lead here in terms of damage per second and because of that they have a lead in the trade department okay now again what i want to point out is that even though on paper they do have a pretty big lead it's also important to point out that from my experience my archer marches have been slower than my infantry marches lately because of the four piece set bonus 
on infantry on top of the fact that you can get the shio's return iconic tier higher much faster because it's easier to get your hands on shio's return which means you're gonna get the extra march speed from that iconic tier four and five faster plus there's a lot of march speed built into these infantry commanders especially liu che especially cpo especially alexander the great so we're seeing infantry in second place here because they are decent damage quite tanky but in practice they're probably going to be faster than archers as well and so archers don't have as big of a lead as you might think when looking at this data but one thing is clear and that is that data is data and so the trades here do look really good for archers so now that we have this data we can learn a couple of things first of all Herman Ashurbanipal and Ashurbanipal Herman I mean absolutely devastating marches here you're getting so many stats you're getting so much AoE skill damage bonus there's the poison stacks on Herman they both have good talent trees like this is an insanely good army now this is one of those weird scenarios where everyone recommends Juge Leong Herman and yet we could see here that Ashurbanipal Herman might actually perform better now that is good on paper right and especially because Ashurbanipal actually has more march speed than Juge Leong as well however it's important to consider some other factors so for example Juge Leong's active skill has a very powerful debuff in a five target circle that's insane also the control effects you have a 50 percent chance to, to negate control effects and when you do you have an instant proc damage factor there and in the simulator the test dummy does not inflict any control effects from what I can tell here and so in this hypothetical scenario Zhuge Liang Herman does perform a little bit worse than the Herman Ashurbanipal or Ashurbanipal Herman but again it, this does not have the complete picture and so the fact that Zhuge Liang Herman performs as good as it does without all of its perks and benefits in place I think that says a lot and so I still will suggest players run Zhuge Liang Herman it's kind of a cheat code it's an insane army I it performed super well for me in this KVK and I'm running two purple pieces on it okay and again this is where theory crafting is useful because now we can compare all of these armies you know side by side you know neck and neck one to one comparisons but you also have to kind of pick apart the nuance here and understand that things are slightly different in game okay now another thing I want to point out here is just the sort of ranking of Belisarius Prime right because I think you know Belisarius Prime is going to be latest greatest newest thing that comes into the game here in just a couple of days and you can see that its best placing is 25th right which is really not great and that's with Joan Belly and that might not even be great and even still if you ran like you know Zhang Yu Belisarius that's in 37th place and Huo Belisarius is literally in last place from a trade perspective so yeah now again this isn't painting the full picture for Belisarius he's got a debuff and also his expertise is going to make things pop really quickly but here's the thing if you want to swarm things down in the open field Belisarius isn't really going to give you that much value and you might say Omniarch well he gives you 12 percent the, the target's going to take 12 percent more damage and again we'll have to test that in game to see exactly how that debuff is going to work or if it's just Belisarius's army but even in the scenario where that target will take 12 percent more all damage from all things hitting it even in that scenario you can already swarm things down really quick and really effectively even without that right and so that benefit is really going to help burning flags and forts but it's really not going to be as great as you think in the open field so that's the other thing I want to put out here Belisarius seems to like from a DPS perspective and a trade perspective he doesn't seem like he's going to completely flip the meta on its head he still has a fighting chance because from a cavalry perspective he's in third place but again like I don't know I'm not I'm still not sold on Belisarius yet we'll have to see some real in-game test results but let's now go over the best five army lineup in the open field for rise of kingdoms based on not only just this data but also with my understanding of the nuance of the things like Zhuge Liang for example performing better in the field so how are we doing this calculation okay well first of all I think most players are running either two archers two infantry and one cav or they're running two archers two cav one infantry or they're running one archer two calves two infantry I think that makes the most sense I really don't see many players doing like a three one one setup it doesn't really make sense to do that these days because your third army of a certain troop type is going to perform worse than the others and so you're better off doing a two two one strategy in my opinion okay or you could do a two one 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 where you actually run a ranged march if that is something that you're willing to invest in at this point we didn't cover ranged here obviously because it's not in the simulator and the way that I did this here was just taking basically so for this example two archers one cav two infantry I took the two best performing damage per sev wound stats or archers 
the two best damage per sev wound stats for infantry and the single best damage per sev wound stat for cavalry and we added them all together and in theory again we're theory crafting here this would be the maximum amount of damage that you could deal per sev wound that you take given that army setup okay so in this example we took the two best performing archer marches which not going to be these two right because you can't run both these armies at the same time obviously they are the same army so we took Zhuiliang with Herman which is 157.6 which means we can't use Zhuiliang or Herman for any of these other marches here right so we can't use this one right so we have three different other armies that we could pick here for the second place slot we can either do Ashurbanipal YSG Ashurbanipal with Nebu or Boudicca Ashurbanipal and in my mind I think Boudicca Ashurbanipal is the best choice here even though technically if we look at the different trades here you could see that the Ashurbanipal YSG would be a slightly better damage per sev wound taken but you're also going to take more sev wounds if you run that route and also Ashurbanipal's march speed is conditional YSG has no march speed and so I think in reality are you going to run Ashurbanipal YSG probably not right probably not now you could do the Ashurbanipal Nebu which is insane I mean that is performing really really well here because you've got the double five target AoE and you do have the March speed on Nebu which is really nice and I think this is a great choice if you already have Nebu and you don't have Boudicca but the reason that I ultimately went with Boudicca is because even though her damage per seven is slightly lower here you have to remember that Boudicca has a really powerful debuff on her active skill she makes the target take 35 percent more skill damage which means all your other armies are going to be dealing way more damage to that target and so is everyone else on the field with aoe and so there's kind of an indirect benefit from Boudicca that is not being reflected in these just raw data numbers here and so for that reason i think Boudicca ashurbanipal is the best second archer march here if you're going to run anything so Jugilion Herman number one, Boudicca Ashurbanipal number two. Who did we pick for the single Cav March? Well, the best performing Cav March is Nevsky Joan, slightly beating out the Huo Joan. So we grabbed Nevsky Joan's data. And then what do we do for the two infantry? Well, CPO and Liu Che, we can't run if we're going to do two infantry because we have to split them up. So we are running the Guan CPO. And then who's the second one? Well, it's not going to be Pyrus Liu Che because even though it does perform really well here in a trade perspective, you could see that the damage output is actually really quite low compared to the other armies here right even compared to let's say Liu Che Alex it's quite low on top of that Liu Che Alex the synergy here is insane the instant proc damage on Alex is insane the March speed combo is insane and so even though it's slightly lower than the Pyrus Liu Che there's actually way more actual benefits for Liu Che Alex than Pyrus Liu Che and so for the two best infantry armies we went with Liu Che Alex and Guan CPO I think that makes sense it's also worth noting that the Gorgo Liu Che literally performed worse than the Liu Che Alex so I mean take with that what you will their damage per second was about the same but we actually took less sev wounds with Liu Che Alex so that's probably because of the shield and in reality in practice the Gorgo Liu Che may be a bit more tanky in the real game however it is also slower so you're trading off there I personally think that if you have the Alex just run Liu Che Alex you don't need Gorgo that's that's was my experience from this KVK I have Gorgo and I still ran Liu Che Alex because the instant proc was basically a cheat code it was basically broken so if we add up the damage per sev wound for all those armies we just talked about we get 574.7 for your total damage per sev wound received now there is one little caveat here that I want to point out and if you are very keen with math you may have have picked up on the fact that technically the best two archer pairs based on the data here would actually be Herman with Asher Bonapal and Boudicca with Zhuye Liang. If you do the math between these two, what you're going to find is that the total is actually higher. It's 293.8 versus the 277.8 for the previously mentioned Zhuye Liang Herman with Boudicca Asher Bonapal. Now, the reason that I did not go the Herman Ashurbanipal route with Boudicca Zhugel Yang is because in practice it would be better to distribute the March speed in a different way so both Herman and Ashurbanipal have March speed whereas Boudicca has less March speed and Zhuge Liang has none and so from an actual open field PvP fighting perspective it would be better to pair Zhuge Liang with the faster Herman Prime and so that's why we distributed it the way that we did so 
technically again technically if you wanted to go just all in on the best possible trades and you didn't care about march speed you could go the other route but I don't see that being a realistic I just don't see people actually doing that in the game next let's go over the two archers two cavalry and one infantry route so in this case we're going to do the same two archers Zhuge Liang with Herman the single best infantry march here is CPO with Liu Che so we grabbed that and when it comes to cavalry we see Nevsky Joan is on top here and then second place we can't use that because Joan's already used can't use third place because that's Joan Belisarius Joan is already used we could grab the Zhang Yu William or Zhang Yu Honda however this is another one of those scenarios where you have to kind of understand how the game actually works in the real world so there are some problems that we have here with Zhang Yu first of all he lowers his own March speed and if you know anything about his kit you'll know that he actually doesn't have any stats besides attack so he is literally the definition of a glass cannon and slowing himself down is the opposite of what you would want to do okay if you are slowing yourself that makes it harder for you to get away from unfavorable matchups which is not what you want if you are a glass cannon also the simulator assumes a best case scenario of always hitting three targets with Zhang Yu and so yes I do think Zhang Yu is still a, an option you could still absolutely run him here but I personally would feel much safer with running Huo over Zhang Yu that's just for me and so here we're going to pick up the Huo with William now you're also going to know here that William Belisarius performed basically the same in the trade department as Huo William but William having the attack tree I don't love that for cavalry I would much rather have the skill tree I think this is another one of those like works well on paper things although of course you know hopefully someone will test it to see how good it actually is they were very close all things considered and so again this is a scenario where Huo is just the safer pick so you might as well go for that in practice and so in this scenario we're going to do Nevsky Joan with Huo William and if you do the math the other way around like Nevsky William and Huo Joan the numbers are very close but technically the Nevsky Joan Huo William is the better play and so if we add up all of those results you're going to get 553.8 again that is damage per sev wound received amongst all of your armies added together and you're going to notice that that is a lower outcome than the previous choice okay so far two archers one cav two infantry is the way to go moving on to one archer two calves two infantry this is a scenario where I did again choose Yu Liang with Herman as your single best archer march I think that makes a lot of sense here the two calves are the same we have Nevsky Joan and Hua William and the two infantry are the same we have Guan Cipio and we have Liu Che with Alex and if we take a look at the data once again we have 526.5 three so it is in this order that would be the best five March lineup so right now two archers two infantry one cav that is theoretically the best possible five March lineup you could have if what you wanted to min max for was your trade ratio second place is two archers two cav one infantry and third place is one archer two cav two infantry unfortunately this is what I run but fortunately it still performs super well and you could see that all three of these numbers are quite close like this is in the grand scheme of things it is very balanced if we crunch the numbers here the two archer one cav two infantry your trades only get 3.64 percent worse if you were to switch to the two archer two cav one infantry and likewise if you switch from two archer two cav to one infantry down to one archer two cav two infantry your trades are maybe five percent worse once again and the biggest drop off is from first place to third place with an eight and a half percent drop in your trade performance but again this is just theory crafting data this is not how it actually works in the game because for example in both of these scenarios you're running two calves which have the highest march speed and you have the best probability of entering and exiting favorable trades and so even though on paper it looks like it would perform much worse in practice this is going to be you're going to have some of the slowest armies on the field running this route and so that's where for me I think the march speed is kind of the equalizer here where it actually makes sense that this would perform a little bit worse because you're going to be able to set yourself up a bit better and get away from unfavorable trades easier as a result of cavalry being a lot faster okay so no matter how you run things right now it things are actually very very balanced now if we're going to talk about the best seven army lineups I did a little bit of math here to figure out what the best choices might be here we've got a three archer two cav two infantry here we have the same thing except we flip the William and Joan so really doesn't change much there here we have an alternative approach to the three archer strategy for the best trades where we did Osher Nebu 
Herman YSG and Boudica Zhuge Liang. And you don't have to worry about down here. I was going to try and do a three infantry lineup, but that is not competitively viable in my opinion at this current moment in time. And so for everyone saying that infantry is OP, if you're running seven armies, then infantry is pretty much in last place. If I'm being completely honest with you guys. So what was the best strategy here for seven army lineups? Once again, we are adding up the damage per sev wound for each of these seven armies and we're spitting out a result you can see that the highest possible damage per sev wound taken is 727.1 out of all of these different strategies and that first place is the three cavalry lineup which we've always been doing for the past like year okay nevsky joan hua william zhang yu honda that seems to be the best if you want the best trades for the archers you would do buduka ashurbanipal and juga Liang with herman a close second place is actually the same three army lineup but with joan and william flipped of course it's kind of a boring switch but you can see the numbers are very very close and this is what i've always said that the huo joan versus huo william that whole debacle like it really doesn't matter too much which order you go with and then in third place is actually a three archer lineup and it's very close to be completely honest with you guys if you did ashurbanipal with nebu herman with ysg and Budico with Zhuge Liang, you're probably going to get the best outcome here in terms of your trades the downside here is that the Herman YSG is going to be heavily targeted in the open field. And so in practice that could perform worse. The other thing that you could do, as I mentioned here, is that you could actually switch the YSG to a Tamiris and Tamiris's relic actually has some March speed there. And so you're going to be trading a little bit worse because you're losing the five target AOE from YSG, but you're going to be gaining more poison stacks. Unfortunately, you're going to be removing them as well, but you'll also gain some more March speed as well. So if you wanted a little bit of a safer three archer lineup, you would do Ashurbanipal with Nebu, Herman with Tamiris, and Boudicca with Zhuge Liang. As I mentioned earlier in the video though, if you want a better March speed breakdown, then you would continue to do this route. But again, you could choose the Tomi over YSG. And if you do decide to do the Tomi over YSG with Herman, then you're looking at a total score of 686.6. So it is significantly lower than the others here, but it's not so much lower that I would consider not using it, right? So again, in my opinion, the best seven army lineup right now is still going to be two archers three cavalry two infantry that's what a lot of players already ran and the data is also backing that up but if you did want to run the three archers i think you you can do that right now and have some really great choices again if you do care about the march speed and you go with the tomi it's going to be a bit worse but it'll still be pretty dang good now if you care about damage per second where the trade doesn't really matter that much to you you just want the most damage per second as possible i had a few choices for that as well i was curious about a three three one setup here and and we got 174,000 damage per second if you do the math. Here, if we do the three archer lineup, two cav, two infantry, you get 196k. And if you do the two archer, three calves, two infantry, you get 205,000 damage per second. So again, this lineup actually wins for highest damage per second. Now you're gonna notice that this is like super risky archer marches here. Juge Leong, Ashurbanipal, pretty good. Herman with YSG, a little bit risky here. Okay. So keep that in mind. But technically, if you were running seven armies and you wanted maximum DPS, this should get it done. Now, if you were to replace the YSG here with Tamiris, then you would get 194,000. So it would still be, you know, very close to this uh, option here and perfectly viable, especially because if you're swarming things, maybe you do want to have that Tamiris there. So this might be a little bit of a safer route to go, just not technically the highest on paper again on the highest on paper doesn't necessarily mean that is the law of the land and that is going to do it man I feel like I've been making really long videos lately and I do apologize but I do want to be as thorough as possible so hopefully you guys appreciate that and if you do and you made it to the end of the video please consider dropping a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and like I said before we're so close to 70,000 subs so please consider subscribing to the channel most of you actually aren't subs so consider doing that and drop a comment down below what you think about all of the data analysis done in this video did you find this information shocking or useful or anything or was this not surprising at all this is kind of exactly what you expected i would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace